Uh, again, we brought to you that uh, good story put together by Joseph Akable at the court, and is the Supreme Court declaring the Dasana and Dani family the rightful rulers of Bimbala following a protracted chieftaincy dispute that we all know had spanned a period of 15 years. And uh, the ruling or the judgment, uh, we also know that has affirmed the National House of Chiefs ruling on the same subject uh, back from 2014. And the court also described the claim. Uh, to the throne by rival Nakwana Dawoni family as lacking merit and becomes a third institution to dismiss their claim to the Bimbela skin. Well, let's watch this. And when we come back, myself, Joseph Akable, will be taking uh, a look at this in detail, look at all the historical perspectives and, 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 and do proper analysis on the subject. For the successful work done by the Supreme Court, each and every living soul within the land is yearning for the verdict. And now that the, the Supreme Court has spoken, we entreat that the youth, brothers and sisters of the land, we should, see to, we should come together as one, rally behind the land, and then at the end of it all, we should be able to do things as common. Uh, now, initially, there were a lot of people here, but we don't have anyone here again. Um, is it because you want to, to bring unity? That is why you decided not to? Yes, unity is one of the paramount issues that each and every youth within the, 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 the kingdom is yearning for. So once the verdict has come out, we can't hide our, ex our excitement. So we have to jubilate a little bit, and then we, we go back to our various homes, so that at least the other faction can also see that we are all one and they can join hands and then we move the entire kingdom at a goal. We have seen this victory as a victory for all and it's not for one faction. It's a victory for uh, my only faction and a victory for the entire kingdom. Considering where we have traveled from to this place, it's a very long journey and we can't continue this way. We can't. We are one people with no destiny. So we have decided to cut the celebration very short as a result of this. Great is paramount. And we can't continue suffering because of this particular thing. We are all in a number, but all of us are not the chiefs. We can't all be chiefs. At least those who are supposed to be should be. And those of us who are not supposed to be, we have to allow them and then go to the so please, we have had the celebration as a source of unity. So we want the region to have peace of mind to see how you can unite with the entire Kumayi family. Well, so we have Seth Kwame Boating. He's a man who has done great work, especially um, re revolving around the conflict and how perhaps peace had not been realized or achieved in the area prior to now. Well, at least now we hope that peace will be achieved. And he's joining myself and Joseph Akable. So we're here just to discuss the, things, um, the issues among ourselves and try to take a look at um, what the way forward will be, so to speak, as we say those phrases in journalism terms and how we can bring peace to the area. Because uh, when there's peace, then we know that uh, we can have development and the people could also have their own uh, livelihoods uh, going on succinctly. Well, Sir Kwan thank you for joining me. Thank you. But um, we will want you, from what you have seen, the literature you've reviewed, the people you've spoken to, to give us some historical background, um, premise on what may have transpired yesterday. Okay. so. Uh, Bimbela had not been peaceful for some time 
uh, since 1999 after the Kukumba War, but peace uh, uh, was restored in Bimbila after some time. But in 20, 2013, uh, it started again when uh, the Bimali Gates needed to uh, uh, settle on somebody as the chief of Bimbela. That gate had two families, the Dasana and Nakpana. Uh, that was where um, confusion erupted, and both uh, families decided to select each chief, a chief from each of the families. And you know it's not like that. One family is supposed to bring one person at a time. So the Nakpana settled on somebody, the Dasana also settled on somebody, and this intensified the heat and the uh, uh, disturbances in Bimbala. Many people were killed. I remember I was just telling Joseph that when the chief Dasana, the one who was murdered in uh, 2014 or 2013, 2014, yeah. and a day or that morning, I went to Bimbala. As soon as it happened that morning, I went to Bimbala with the You day. happen to have been there? No. As long as it or happened. You, you happen to have been there some hours or No, so. no, no, no. It happened. They told the interior minister, so we flew to Tam to okay. Bimbila from Accra. An emergency. Yeah, the interior minister, myself, the um, IGP, then Mr. Al Hassan. And we went you, to you say again that year was that was 20, 2014. 2014. They, they, they attacked him in his palace and shot him. In his palace and shot and shot him together with um, two others also. Okay. So we went there and it was it was a sad atmosphere um, and how you could see on their faces that the people needed development, but. We always forget those who are behind, those who have been behind over the period. We call them shadow parties. They benefit from the conflict, so they wouldn't want peace restored. And if it's a shadow party, so nobody should think politics. No, no, no. no it's not you are talking about benefits. feuding interested exactly. parties. They are, they, they, are par they are people who benefit. So, for example, the people who are poor, how do they get the arms? Do we think about that? Who give them the arms? Where do they get the arms from? So there are people who supply them the arms. And they benefit. So if this conflict ceases or stops, where, how do they sell their, their arms? So these are people. There are people who want lands. So who want the, co the conflict to continue so that they benefit. So they wouldn't want the people to appreciate why there must be peace in Bimbala. But I'm happy that this ruling has finally come. And the people yesterday from the discussions we had with them, they are pledged to ensure that the peace continues and that they need development. You know? I remember when I went there two years ago, doctors had fled, nurses had fled, teachers had gone back. So if you needed an x-ray, they had an x-ray machine there at the Bimbala Hospital. But you have to go to um, Tamale to get the x-ray done before you come back. Because those who could manage the x-ray machine left because of the conflict. I remember if you needed to move from Bimbala to Tamale to transact business, you need to go and come back, like you have to spend like 30 minutes in, in uh, Tamale to enable you to come back because of the curfew. So one morning when I went there, um, people who had traveled from other, who were passing through Bimbala to other countries, you know, you can pass there to other countries, the neighboring countries and other big towns. It's 6 p.m. so they needed to stop, pack and sleep there. You could see women and children sleeping in cars. Um, from just yes, because uh, you the can't cross, yeah, curfew. So it has really disturbed the people. It has really, really brought down businesses. Uh, people have been maimed. People have been killed. And several children uh, have been rendered off. They're orphans. They lost their some lost both parents. You understand to this conflict. So I'm happy that finality has finally um, come, and um, we pray that nothing happens again because uh, the people are tired. Okay, so that's where, Joseph, I get to you. The, if you look at the atmosphere, you look at the reactions from both sides. Of course, those who have the ruling going for them will be elated. But then, when you have to smoke the peace pipe, then you, all parties need to have a certain buy-in. Per your own analysis of uh, what the atmosphere is, do you think that you, you see signs of not discord? but more a sense of unity from uh, the other party that may not have the ruling going for them. I, I think for the frontliners are those who belong to the 
family um, itself, the Dawuni family, the Nakwana Dawuni family, uh, we can expect those frontliners to understand the ruling. Where the frontliners are? I'm mean, talking about the them. chiefs and those people. And I'm saying that because they are the people who took the matter to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who took it to the Naiwi. They are the ones who took it to the Northern Regional House of Chiefs. They are the ones who took it to the National House of Chiefs and subsequently the Supreme Court. But like um, Seth says, the other individuals who stand to benefit from uh, the conflict, the other individuals who have their own interest, we can expect those people to come on kind of fuel uh, some discord in the community. Yesterday when I interacted uh, with them at the court premises, uh, the losing faction, they were very disappointed. Um, right when uh, they brought the matter to the Supreme Court, it appears they expected to win. The Supreme Court itself uh, took the matter seriously. On that day, it read about four different judgments. That was the only judgment that the Supreme Court judges read the entire judgment. All the previous three, they only said the application is dismissed. Uh, we don't grant any cost. Next one, application is dismissed. But for that particular case, they took their time to read the entire judgment because they know how important this decision is to the people. And the hope is that once they've come out to this decision, they've not only um, given legitimacy to someone, but apart from that, they've also set a path that will guide them in terms of who succeeds um, whoever is the regent currently, if, if there's any gap and they ne it needs to be filled. Uh, so for the frontliners, like I said, we really hope that they because keep Because generally you see from the actions. We see the from the actions. They were simply sad. But I mean, apart from being sad, later on when we spoke to them around 3 p.m., uh, they said in clear terms that they were committed to peace. Wow. But then uh, the others, I mean, we, we, mm. we've, we've seen uh, the situation in Bimbela. Sometimes it is calm, then all of a sudden, Mostly when we are told when uh, the security presence is withdrawn a bit, it's a bit lesser. So now we know that the soldiers will be around for at least two weeks. Mm. But after two weeks, uh, you can expect some few people to right. want to. Uh, but but, but said, you, you have your graduate studies in, is it conflict resolution yeah. and, conflict and all that? So, but, but also, at the, at the end of the day, you have been on ground. Yeah. This is what may have transpired based on his own observations in Accra. With your experience going on ground, going to the community, and the adjoining areas with the perhaps um, the, the pent up feeling. What could be a precipitating factor for any kind of upheaval or disagreement in any way? Okay, so um, that was what I was really, really uh, looking at yesterday, and I had been calling the people in Bimbela don't over jubilate. You mean while the case the ruling was being read was or being, had been read had been read and the, was being read had been read yes from you from also were on the line yeah, trying to get I'm your on the line speaking to people um some leaders in bimbala telling them that no matter what you people should accept the verdict and ensure that there is peace in in bimbala what could trigger any upheaval is when the the side that won decide to uh, over jubilate Look down upon you mean they shouldn't taunt them, yes. Um, they shouldn't be in the face the, of the other in moderation. You understand? Um, don't look down upon them, they are family, they are relatives, they are together. It's I was just being told by it's, it's intra gate, not yeah. inter gate, intra gate. So you understand? Two families, yeah, two gate, families. Yeah. you understand? So don't look down upon the other, bring they should all come together. Well, yesterday when we spoke to the Nakpana family, they said, Yeah, we are in pain, it's painful, we lost. But we are committed. We want peace to come to uh, to Bimbela. So we're going to work together with the, the regents to ensure that there is peace in Bimbela. But I pray that the side that won would not do anything that would um, anger the, 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 the other side. Otherwise, and uh, there, will be, there will be a problem. I wouldn't say there will be any conflict, but there will be a problem. But I'm happy that the NDP Centre, the National Peace Council, the Northern Regional Peace Council worked very hard. I, I know that Monday um, they brought all the youth in Bimbala together. Before that, they had been engaging both sides. Monday they held a meeting, brought all the youth together, um, took them through the process, how to accept defeat, how to welcome the news, how to do this and that. And the youth came together and pledged that they will ensure that there is peace. So yesterday when I saw some people on the street of Bimbala jubilating on handkerchiefs and other things, I called a um, for the third, uh, third year, um, he said, well, it was all part of the arrangement, that they will do it, but in moderation. They will never do it. So I was, I was a little tense, apprehensive. When I, apprehensive that, hey, they have to be careful. But he said, well, we agreed. 
they, you can't say they should not celebrate or jubilate, but in moderation. So that was what happened yesterday. And I pray that, yeah, it's, that was yesterday. To, it's, uh, the times have changed. Now we are in another day. So they shouldn't see themselves as uh, belonging to the Nakpana family, the Sana family. They are all from the same tribe with the Gbemaili Gate. And they are all from Nanum, Nanumba, you understand? So we, we, we pray for the progress of Nanum. And it's, uh, it's not time we're going to... And, and perhaps the Andana family, the Andani family, they should be patient in terms of how uh, they begin to exercise their authority that has exactly, been granted. Exa legitimacy. Exactly. So if there are some lands that the other guys used to control that you may now ha have rights to because of occupying that skin now, you should not want to try to... Tell them that Charlie, we are the chiefs. You have to move mm. away from here. They should work uh, together. It, it, it should, they should be a bit patient. Yeah. So you're because saying you those will be the conflicting points. Yeah. All right. But let's go um, speak to our correspondent who is on the ground, Mart Martina Bugri. We spoke to her early yesterday morning. I'm sure the rest of the day also she'd been uh, on on stream speaking to various reporters on regular programming on the channel. Martina, good morning. Roland. Mm. And um, what's your own assessment this morning? Uh, we know that it will be. Not necessarily 24 hours, perhaps less than 16 hours since the ruling. But uh, what's your own assessment since then? Um, how have people taken it uh, that long period after the ruling? Um, life is back to normal in Bimbila. I went to the town this morning um, before I left the area. They are back to work. The market is busy. People are mm. in their offices. Schools are in session. And life is generally um, back to normal. It doesn't look like anything happened yesterday. But uh, th th there's always a point where uh, we have leaders who perhaps have that sense of unity in Accra. I'm talking about both sides on either side of the ruling. And um, back home, there could be some difficulties. Have you been able to get in touch with opinion leaders who had been left behind to get to gauge um, what their own um, perhaps uh, moods are so going forward they know that they could lead their own people to a, a better destiny um, yesterday I was at the the Dapana family home where I spoke to the region he says that um, he didn't see there was a winner or a loser mm. what he says is that everybody is a winner in this case because he's going to bring development to Manu and so he sees it as a development for Manu and not a, a particular side winning but the Nakana family said they, they are yet to meet at the family and then decide on what to do. They wouldn't talk to the media. They said um, they need that sober time among themselves to deliberate on issues. And so that I didn't get from them, but from the uh, Andani, the Sana family, um, they are ready to move on and then to reunite the rest of the Mbila so that they can bring the necessary development and their place to be an mm. What could be the potential conflicting points, or perhaps uh, the potential disagreeing points by by which uh, um, any disagreement could come at all? But Mart Martina, I didn't get that. Uh, what could be the potential conflict points? Not necessarily conflicts, but perhaps the uh, issues they may disagree with in the interim. What could I trigger? any of their pent-up feelings? So. For now, I don't see anything triggering anything yet. Um, they, they said that they would need to sit down and talk. So we don't know what they are going to talk about. But uh, what I guess is that, well, they are not happy, but um, they would take it as it has come. That is the sense I get. One, one thing I do know about the area, uh, that, that be, beyond having the indigents, they are usually uh, settler groups, uh, people who had settled for if not decades or if not uh, hundreds of years um, in, in the area and who also have some s sense of livelihood and ownership uh, in the communities. Yeah. Um, how, how are they taking it as, let's say, observers, not part of the kith and kin, so to speak? I, I, they are seeing the thing as victory, you know. Um, it's something they have been waiting for. They think that it's gotten to the apex. Nothing can... Um, bring a split again. And so they appreciate the effort that has gone in to bring it to this state. All they are just hoping is um, not so what happens and then we move forward. I think you get a sense that we are tired of the fighting. We are tired of the killing. We are tired of people dying and leaving their younger ones to the mercy of 
the, everybody. And so they, they want to see it come to an end. Well, thank you very much. Matana Bugri uh, in Bimbila giving us up-to-date report on 16 hours after a ruling, uh, what the atmosphere is and how the communities, uh, just uh, as Nanums, uh, could move on. Uh, we'll, we'll try and speak to the MC for Bimbila, uh, Abdullah Yakub, and um, we'll, we'll get that insert. But, Seth, before we get to that insert with the MC, um, what what would be your own roundup analysis or perhaps okay. point about what Martina has reported now? Okay, I'm, I'm happy uh, that um, the winning side is ready to work with the Nakmana family. And I feel strongly that it's time they work together. They should do things together. I remember what worked for Nakpanduri, what worked for uh, Bunkuru, mm -hmm. um, had to do with the uh, chiefs making sure that um, they moved to the other side to welcome them, to bring them. For example, Nangpanduri, in the heat of the conflict, when they resolved that enough was enough, they were tired of the conflict, the, the main chief went to the other chief, said, come and live in my house for days. So they stayed under the same roof for days, just to send signals to their people that we are together, so you, you must also be together. I remember the Bunkurugu chief, had to also go to the other side, that come, let's work together. Let, let's attend funerals together. Let's attend this together. And now, those places are peaceful. So I pray that they're able to do the same in Bimbala. It's not a bygone, be bygone, as we often say it. And um, come together, work together. You understand? You didn't lose nor win. It's Bimbala, it's Nanum. So come join forces and show that the place is developed. That's what I want to see, moving on. So anytime there are funerals, they should move together. There are some gathering, they should move together. There are prayers, they should move together. Yesterday, I wanted to find out if they also had a ritual they could perform to end it. Because in, in Bunkurugu and uh, Nangpanduri, they had this blood burial. They cut animals, live animals into two. They buried the blood and all those things. And it helped uh, end the conflict. You know, after that, you dare not fight. You dare not. They have so much faith in that. Because the moment you attempt fighting, you'll be killed by the gods. I remember I'm, I was I'm told Bimbala is different. They have their own ritual they perform. And, and I, I, I pray they, they're able to do something like this because too. Because you feel that will bring a certain finality yes, to... Yes, in Boku too, that worked. You, Boku has been peaceful. Uh, Bunkrugo has been peaceful. Nangpanduri has been peaceful. So I wish they had same in Bimbala, but they have their own style of doing things. So I'm looking forward to seeing them do that. Oh, that's a peace broker there. Oh peace reporter so to speak but <laughs> let's go uh, and speak to the political or state actors and abdullah yakub is uh, the mc for bimbila uh, let's uh, hear from him and then we'll come back we'll look at now what steps need to be taken by the state actors um could be the minister could also be other oversight ministers more so what should be the push of the political elites towards um, bimbila we are one people and before the verdict, we all committed ourselves to the fact that after the verdict, we will abide by the decision of the apex court. So the verdict has come. Certainly some are happy, some are not happy. And it behoves on us as Nanumbes to, to realize that we are one, especially the youth. We, I encourage them to look beyond today. For tomorrow, for tomorrow, for the destiny of Nanum lies in their hands. And I will also want to encourage them and appeal to them that they should look at the image that we have carved for ourselves. It is now time for us to break part bridges and to start repairing our shattered image as a people. At a point, we became a laughing stock to the whole world. So I appeal to all true sons and daughters of, Nan of Nanu to make sure that we don't go back to our past after this verdict. And that is what will make people see us as a serious tribe. And we'll be speaking to legal practitioner Martin Pebble very soon. But Joseph, let me ask you, um, you look at the posture of the political elite from all the conflict that we've had erupting uh, over decades across the country. 
Um, it's especially in the Fourth Republic, we've had the posture of the political elite, perhaps not too suitable, depending on the period or the time. What should it be this time? I mean, it's, it's how they exert their influence. In this particular conflict, the accusation has been leveled against successive governments of the kind of role they've played in it. We know that when this government took over, uh, when the body had been in a mock for years, yeah. uh, the, the government gave clearance on the basis of a letter that it was decomposing, so yeah. it was buried. And that was what made way for the regents to be installed by the Nampana family. And so uh, people don't want to see such things happen going forward. Uh, one interesting thing I picked from Martinez' engagement was uh, the fact that the Nakpana family, when she visited them to try to engage them, uh, they said they were still meeting and were yet uh, to decide uh, what exactly they want to do. I think the earlier they do that, the better. Uh, the second issue is that the decision is out. So in terms of the, the, the controllers of the security agencies, they must give legitimacy to who the court says yeah. is legitimate. Uh, if you are seen to be given any form of uh, support, any form of acknowledgement. So even in terms of uh, the, the House of Chiefs at, at that level, the, the representation, the legitimacy should be given to who the court says you should give it to. If it's security protection, you have to give it to the person. If it's any vehicles that perhaps we know the chiefs receive vehicles sometimes, I mean, uh, from the state actors. If any such thing is coming, it should go to uh, who it's supposed to be given to. If you don't, you're not seen to be uh, siding, particularly not with the person in power, but rather with the other faction. That is when you can encourage them and embolden people to want to take the law into their own hands. So the state actors who control the forces, they should be seen to be protecting those who should be protected, apart from the general protection they give to everyone, in terms of who they should grant legitimacy in all engagements. And that, I think, will be a key to this whole piece, I think, that we need to ensure. Okay, so let's speak to Martin Kwebu. He's a legal practitioner, but we're not speaking to him on the side of the law, but because he has um, great live-in experience. And uh, Martin Kwebu, good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. Hey, I'm, I'm reliably informed that you lived in Bimbela before. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, in a situation, uh, I'm not imagining that perhaps um, you have a, a virtual eye uh, at Bimbela currently, but... In, in such situations in which you, you live in a community and, and the people live together but perhaps uh, have, been, have been divided by conflict or uh, those who are even settlers a bit un, uncertain uh, about the state of peace, how, people, how should the normal neutrals in the town take it that after this ruling we're expecting peace and so peace it should be? Yes, yeah, good. So Basically, we all expected that uh, everybody would uh, abide by the Supreme Court decision. Yes, so that uh, normal peace would return to the town and its environment because this conflict has taken too long, too, too, too long. As uh, you asked, I lived there uh, in the 90s, actually, 80s, as a child. My uh, uh, parents we teaching in the training college. There's a training college, uh, the equivalent of Atrafi over there. So we lived in the college and then went to school. I mean, for about how many years? Six years? Yeah, when I was here. Yeah. So I'm excited to see. And those days, the place was peaceful. We didn't have this conflict. Then when we left, and then not long after, let's say, six years later, then this conflict started. So basically, I'm excited to see that. Uh, with this judgment, peace will return so that Bimbla will flourish. Because, you know, someday I expect that we will go back with my children to show them that, oh, this is where I grew up as a, a, a child, you see. Uh -huh. So it would make me proud that the town will flourish so that someday we can also uh, go back there and then uh, have some memories, mm. you know. So, but uh, Roland, I think moving forward, perhaps not just today, uh, earlier on, I heard you uh, show how uh, your colleague, I think, Mr. Kwan Boakun, had been there, and he had done stories over months. So perhaps even after today, you should keep the search light on the town so that you would continue to monitor progress. Because, you know, uh, TV and radio also give results. One, the indigenous uh, get to know that, so uh, even though you are far away in a craft, you're very much interested in the progress of the town. It also helps, you know, behavior. It helps to change because once the cameras are there, you know, people don't want to do wrong things in the eyes of the camera. Uh -huh. So keep mm -hmm. the cameras there, continue reporting on progress, 
and then uh, let's see uh, how it goes. But I wish the sound the best of luck, the best, best, best of luck. Okay, but in my lay mind's mind, I'm thinking if there's a ruling, perhaps uh, we can also, up to the grassroots level, I mean, not relating it to issue of politics, uh, up to the normal uh, household level, perhaps we can go doing some one-on-one -on -one interpersonal education, uh, um, telling people all around the communities that, that, oh, this is the ruling that has been... Um, given by the Supreme Court of our land, of our republic. Um, how does that go? Is, is that a usual practice? Oh, it's excellent. That, that's fantastic. So I can uh, imagine that just as you've mentioned this, they will take it up because I'm sure by now people in Zimbabwe will be watching this program and uh, so I would expect that the imam would continue to preach peace in their mosque and then they uh, uh, preach. You know, there, there are a lot of... Uh, Churches there. Uh, I'm Catholic. Even when we were kids, we used to go to a Catholic church there. So I'm sure the uh, Catholic church, and they also have done, yes, natural fast, yes, yes, yes. This reminds me, you know, the Archdiocese in Yeti have done a fantastic job on it. They have been intervening, seven as mediators in both mm -hmm. the Bimbila and, and the Dabo crisis. So I'm sure they would continue, uh, Bishop Boyna and the rest. So uh, I'm sure they would continue. And so that, that is the right way to go. And I have a lot of classmates. You see, just in case uh, you, uh, you didn't know, the former Deputy Interior Minister, Agalga, mm. says, uh, so he was my classmate. We were both there. His dad was the principal of the training college, okay. the Bimbla Training College. Yes. So we grew up there for, as I said, in the 80s, uh, from about 1984 to about 91. Mm. Yes. Mm. You say, and I have a lot of classes. Some of them, those are indigenous of the town. They are doctors, teachers. There's a platform, so I'm sure they would uh, continue the education. Okay, they would continue. We are all excited because though it's not my hometown, as I said, once I grew up there, I haven't really had the opportunity to live in my hometown like that. So you kind of get connected to the place as if it were your home. So you would want to see everything go well with Simbila. Well, thank you very much. I think your contribution has been immense. And we thank you, legal practitioner Martin Pebu. And um, we'll, we'll try and see whether we can get um, more, more views on the subject. But uh, we have also a security aspect with the West African Network for Peace, Albert Yol Young. I hope I pronounce it. Uh, sounds more Japanese, though, but don't, don't worry. Uh, Mr. Yol Young, good morning to you. You're joining us uh, via Skype. Good, good morning, sir. Good morning, and good morning to your listeners. Mm. Uh, um, now, w w what should be done now? We have a ruling. Um, you, the big institution, the think tanks, etc., and the state actors, what do you think you can do to perhaps mainstream or uh, um, consolidate what information has been given in that ruling to the people so that they get a better understanding of what the end result is at least <laughs> they need to know yeah thank you so much and uh, i think basically everyone is happy about the ruling um and, and also the dynamics on the ground um as we know currently there is stability and people are going about their normal businesses as and I think that there is some kind of uh, relief. You see, the people um, it's difficult to accommodate uh, for some people. Um, the ruling um, is a normal human feeling. With things that going for, um, where there has to be that sustainability of the activities that were being implemented before. Uh, you can talk about education and sensitization of the people, so that they understand really what that ruling means. Um, I know that the Peace Council has been involved. Um, One of Ghana and his partners have been involved. Uh, the church in Yendi has been involved. Uh, local mediation team, everyone has been involved uh, in ensuring that there is that, that kind of stability in the area. So the education has to continue. The sensitization has to continue. Um, trying to encourage people to be non-violent and also let them understand what that really means and how 
the strategies that they could employ going forward to ensure that that ruling is sustainable and that there's stability in the area. We think that also um, the security presence has to continue. Um, it is not just by the fact that people are calm at the moment, uh, all is too well. Uh, you would not know who might want to infiltrate the system uh, and take advantage of the current uh, stability in the area and probably using that as an excuse to do anything. So I think that also has to be very sustainable and for a long time until such a time that there is some assessment that indicates, yes, there is a need to pull out and maybe probably gradually. Um, so basically that is what I think. And the people, the, the leaders of both factions have to do that or lead that process of education and calming, appealing for calm and uh, letting the following know that this is what we need to do and that we need to extend the peace leap to um, either party. Uh, there, is, there should be humility in, in losing and there should be humility in winning. And that is why we think that those who have won should not uh, overjubilate. And to the extent that it might provoke tensions, obviously, if you are you have lost an, a case and another person is sort of behaving in a manner that tells you that you did not really have a case, um, I think um, that will not occur well. I think the ruling, the spirit is that there has to be stability in the in area, and that there has to be peace in Bimbala so that uh, development can go on agriculture can go on, which is the mainstay of the area. And people, especially the youth, can make maximum use of their energy uh, within the area. Now, in, in, in moving on with how institutions like yours, um, the state actors or the institutions like the assembly, um, the other relevant uh, state institutions with uh, offices there, uh, how they can work, what should be the collaboration be far different from what existed before the ruling to maintain the peace? I think largely uh, um, that, that collaboration has been on. I, I remember very well uh, one of Ghana technically leading a, pro a program known as the Northern Ghana Governance Activity Team mm. in Bimbala on the conflict. Hello. As it is with Peace Council, the regional committee is supposed to coordinate activities of peace activities at that level. Um, we have worked with the assembly. I remember at a point the assembly provided some other items um, and supported. There was a killing of a cow and providing other logistics to support mobilization and all that for, for meetings to take place. So the assembly has been very influential uh, in, in this regard, and also the regional security council. So I think that in the Catholic Church, of course, everyone has been working. And wherever each one left off, then we try to inform the other, this is where we have reached, so that they can continue from there. In order that there is no duplication of efforts, and that we can maximize the resources and do not create fatigue in the So this kind of collaboration will continue. And I think that because at each level, we have the capacity that we can uh, draw on. Uh, for instance, the National Peace Council is a state architecture, and it can is close to government and I can, advise, can advise government, you know, and I let them know these are the things that we think that you should pay attention to uh, in order that there is stability in the area. So at each level, there is that kind of capacity that can be drawn on. And I think that that communication will even improve more. Well, uh, thank you very much, Albert Yol Yang. Uh, Albert Yol Yang is with um, the West African Network okay. for Peace. And it's a think tank. They they work extensively across uh, the West African sub-region. He is joining us on, on Skype. Yes, and uh, we have to wrap up. But Seth, uh, now what should um, the Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Defense do? But more so, what should we do collaboratively to ensure media is playing its part, the government institutions are playing its part to reach the people? Okay. On the part of the media, I, I think we should continue talking about the effect of that conflict on the people, the effect, what they've lost to the conflict, their schools, the hospitals, investment, how businesses are, how investors are unwilling to come and set up in Bimbala. They sh we should keep talking about all these things for them to realize what they, what they lost to the conflict and why they have to ensure that there is peace so they regain everything they lost. I think that we have enough security men there 
well, later they may want to withdraw them, but it should be gradual. It should, they should not take all of them away uh, so that um, the civilians um, can integrate with the what time they will pull out the, the, the military first over time over time yeah so that uh, they they can integrate with the police uh, the civil the civilian relationship we can have that in bimbala um uh, we should keep talking to them about peace we should keep preaching peace to them that's what i think the media we should go and when we go to bimbala next time it's about what they stand to benefit mm. now that there is peace mm. we should keep telling them that so that they will see what is ahead of them but uh so Joseph, uh, as we wrap up, what happens to who becomes the? Because I'm t you're, you're telling me the uh, the person who ideally should have been uh, has passed. Yes, even uh, as a but the family has skinned yeah. someone, uh, but the rival family also has skinned someone. Yes. So it means that uh, the Andani Dasana family, uh, this is the legitimate one now. So okay. obviously that person we need the support of the other faction in order to govern the area properly and we expect them to submit to that authority and, and in fact, i know state. a region necessarily is not a, it's not supposed to be the chief yeah it's uh, almost like holding the office an yeah. acting well, yeah. uh, yes so it means they have to select somebody else I, or I they come can't, in i can't it. speak to this for now i okay. may have to be find out more because they, they are yes. traditional uh, yeah, by which they do more. the selection yeah. and all that but i've enjoyed the conversation it's great education for all of us and we hope that we can also use as uh, cases in point to know how to deal with um, conflicts in relevant parts of our country uh, i've been joined by joseph uh, Akable. we've had some great discussions from him this morning throughout the morning on the show and uh, a man who is always on, on the beat saving souls uh, across ghana and uh, seth kwame Bwating. good work you're doing sir thank you all right